back, it's Christine again with the Artist Pod, and today we're going to talk about how to draw a Luna Moth. Um, and specifically, I'll, I'll talk a lot about how to do the wings as well to get that sort of sheer effect when you're drawing wings. So, let's get arting. Now, I am going to fill it in, but I'm not going to put full pin pressure because there are um, some spots that I need to be brighter than just the base wing. There's also some veiny sort of um, spots through the wings, so I'm probably going to have to have like different lines going in different directions to give it that kind of ethereal quality to it. And so what I'm doing here is this second wing, right, is right here, so I'm brightening up significantly where that green kicks in so that it's obvious this is a, an overlap. So you'll notice that as I'm doing these um, wings that were underneath, I'm going back to the light pin pressure because I want to give the illusion that the overlapping um, is what's caused this um, brighter color because they're kind of, you know, um, a little bit see-through-ish. So I'll have to drop it down. Um, my Highlighting will need to be tapered back off as I come down here just like I did for over here Because I want to make sure that is very clear and seeable that their wings um, Are just that little bit see-through I may and I haven't decided yet I may also bring in a lighter green to help indicate some of this as well But right now I'm just trying to do it with the one um, Color we'll see how that goes Now what I've done here is I have my light source coming from straight up, but that means as we come to the edges, I'll need to round off or uh, lighten up the pin pressure. Now its head here is kind of down a bit, and so it would not be in full highlight. It's down um, under, you know, this whole, all of his wings here. But I want to differentiate it enough from the gray that it's clearly a different color, so I have to brighten it a bit more than I typically would, but I can still leave it a pretty, um, grayish white where I don't have to add as much uh, highlight to it. And again his body's going under his wings and rounding away from the light source as it rounds down so I'm lightening that up as well or not lightening it up, lightening up the pin pressure. Making it darker so that the highlight is on top. All right, so you do these little antennas um, very much the way you would do a feather, where you have like a center point and then you have all of these lines kind of coming off. So we're just going to fill that in. Very nice loose lines coming from the center point. 
What if we may get rid of the sketch for the center point because it may be too much. We want it to be more feathered than that. And as you come up towards the top of it, right, like I'm coming straight out, and then as I come up towards the top, I start angling them up. And then we come back down the other side. It'll end up with a very feather-like quality. So if you ever want to do feathers, this is how you do it. And the more they overlap, the more feather-like they'll seem. And they're not feathers, they're just sort of fluffy <coughs> antennas, but the same thing will apply. That overlapping, that sort of crisscross, that obvious crisscross, is what creates the illusion of a feather. So whenever I erase something, I know I said it in another video, I don't typically use the actual erase tool. Um, I actually select it and delete it out because since I'm working on print on demand, the eraser tool only lowers the opacity, um, but selecting something and then hitting backspace erases it completely. And since I did erase out that center line, I do need to come back in here and fill in those gaps. But by filling it in with that crisscross pattern and these angles can help make it look better than it would have with a line running up the center. So I'm trying to determine if I like this particular feature. I'm putting it on a um, different layer trying to simulate the idea that it's got the veins in between the which you know it's it's easy to do you just do light sort of um, almost an S like shape as you're drawing I think it does give it more of that quality so I may go ahead and finish adding that in I'd started doing that up here but on the original layer and I was worried I was it was too much so I, I backed it back off and you can see I'm just doing these sort of quick S's but you want it to look very light I don't want to put a lot of pin pressure I don't want it to be overwhelming but I want it to be noticeable because they would have had all these little sort of veins running through their wings um, and partly the reason for that is you can see it better particularly on um, Anytime the wings are more ethereal, they're not as you know solid, you can see through them, you're going to have the ability to see more of those veins in the wings. It's going to add to the effect that they're more see-through if you can see these all of these little sort of squiggles. And just doing that, I think actually added quite a lot. Definitely gave it that quality, which is what we want, right? Like we want it to kind of look sheer because that's kind of what, what it is. It's hard to mimic that when you're doing like 100% opacity on a drawing, but this is one of the ways to do it. It simulates those veins for us, and our brains interpret that a certain way. I'm going to push it a little bit further. Well, I like where it is, but I want it to be noticeable enough. Now, um, I'm, going, I'm drawing the S's at an angle, right? So I'm doing an S shape going in this direction, kind of this squiggle, as I'm coming down and following the contour of the wings. As I come here though, I'm going to change that angle just a bit because I'm, I'm sort of, I need to follow the angle of the wings themselves for it to look more believable, but I don't want it to stay in any singular, you know, you can see the these bigger veins coming down. I don't want it to stay in one of those. I want them to be crossing over and you can see the difference if you pop that off. So when I've talked before about adding subtle details, right? Like this is fine. I have a little bit of, of hint of that when I first drew out these bigger um, sort of veins. You get it a little bit uh, more on this side than that side. But then I add this into it and it, it highlights that, that sheerness to the wings. Um, you know, you look at it and mentally we think, oh yeah, obviously this is, you can see right through it. I haven't done anything different. All I've done is those little S's. 
Um, but it just, it's sort of a, a quick, easy trick to add a little bit of detail that can do a lot without overwhelming um, an image. Almost done. Sometimes it's why I also like to go back and take a look at it is I can see the overall picture and I can see if I've left a, a sort of glaring gap that doesn't really make sense. Sometimes, because what we're doing when we're creating, you know, any work of art is we're creating an illusion of three-dimensional space. And so sometimes you have to not necessarily draw exactly how it would be. You need to sort of cheat the system a bit in order to translate that three-dimensional object into two dimensions onto a sort of 2D plane. Um, which is why you need to back out. Like backing out gives me the perspective I need to say, gosh, there's a hole here, I missed a section there, this looks right or it doesn't look right, and I can make those changes. But I think, I think that is looking good. All right, so that is how you draw a Luna Moth. I hope that was helpful. In the floating nether next to me, I have other videos or art tutorials I have done, and I will see you all soon. Thank you so much. Take care.